All right, good morning, everybody. God bless each and every one of you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> I'm up extremely early. I got up like at 2 a.m. this morning and just couldn't go back to sleep, thinking a lot. And anyhow, I took and uh, woke up, set my phone up in the window and just wanted to check the... Uh, see what was going on and I get posted on Israel what's happening on Israel all the time and uh, the news not that you know I really I don't follow the news I just follow what's being reported and uh, you know it's like when I left there I seen the uh, the violence and the road rage you know where you know getting into the car I felt it while I was there just getting into the car, going someplace, it was like, you know, an, enough to where you just really didn't like it, you know? It was like, man, you know, let's like get ready for this, man, because it's going to be nothing but uh, like road rage. And, uh, you know, you guys, since I came back, since I came back, and I've only been back a couple of months, um, it's, that place is upside down, man. Uh, the road rage, people being killed and stuff like that. Violence, I mean, just extreme. And, uh, the, um, no peace there, you know, between, um, the people, everything that's going on, man. And how they're coming against the Philistines and the Philistines. You know, when I was there, I was telling everybody there, man, don't take sides. Don't take anybody's side. We follow Christ. We don't follow what the world is doing. The world is going to be in chaos. And that's what's happening over there now. And, uh, you know, you can see like when the world leader goes over there and how the world leaders, whoever they are, somebody just showed me a photo of Prince Charles over there. And then the picture of all the, like the Orthodox Jews that are Catholic based or whatever they are, but with the pictures of you know the old runes from thou several thousand years old, taking their pictures in there, and I'm thinking to myself, man, this is very very spiritual. This is why you guys we have to be born again, renewed in our mind spiritually discerning everything not the way the world is doing it the world's in a lot of trouble the world's being driven that's why it says evil will destroy the wicked and you can be certain of that because it's written and it's going and it is they're already they're done already if they can't wake up and snap out of this they're already done excuse me anyhow let me read some, you guys. I put some stuff together, okay? You guys, by the grace of God, we know who we are, okay? We know that we've been redeemed, okay? We've been saved. We got pulled out of this world to see the truth from the darkness. Because we were all heading this course, like it says in Ephesians chapter 2. We were heading that way by the grace of God. We got snatched out, quickened in with Christ, and now we see things. We look at everything spiritually. We don't look at things like the way the world is doing it anymore. Because we know those that are of the world, they're taking... That's why I told you, don't take anybody's side. You know? Um, God was... God's chosen people were the Hebrews. Then they got a history. All you got to do is read the book. They got a history of turning away, going back and forth, back and forth, crying out to the Lord... Well, they haven't done that in a long time. In America, <clears throat> this place uh, came in through Christ, but then they did the same thing. The world. The world. You know, when you let this world in, that's why I'm telling you guys, we do not do that. We're discerning everything spiritually. We're here right now. We've been pulled out of it, not to be a part of it, but to be uh, separated from it. That's why it says, come out from among them. Unless you suffer their plagues, their pestilence, the death, and everything that's coming with it. Okay. 
And it's really, really bad there right now, okay? Anyhow, that's why I say I got out of there, man, because I seen all this stuff coming. And there's and it's coming here, too. It's coming here. It's coming everywhere. It's coming all over the world. Okay? When, when you got a lot of peace there, there's going to be a peace everywhere in the world. When you got a lot of chaos and mayhem there, you can expect it here, too. It is. Okay, all right, let me uh, read some of this to you guys. Um, like I said, you guys, when I start this off, at most I can see like two sentences at a time because my screen for that part, I've got four separate screens. One of them does nothing. And the one that I really read from, <laughs> it's the smallest. I'd like to make it a lot bigger if I could. But anyhow, here we go. Hosea 7.13 Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10, 11, and 12. Maybe more. Like I said, it's a small screen. I can't see them too good. For as many as are of the work of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just will live by faith. You know, the faith that we have in Christ, we're, that's where our salvation is, in Christ. And you guys, we have it in our heart. You know, we don't do those things we used to do. Especially when you're walking in the spirit, man. If you're the world, man, you're done. You're done. Carnally, you're done. I mean, most of these people you see in Israel, man, that claim to be this or that or that, whatever um, they are, they're, the world has contaminated them. The world, it's polluted, man. And it's gotten into them, whatever they call themselves. Orthodox Jews or whatever they call themselves. It doesn't matter. Pharisees, the world has still gotten a hold of them. Just like the Christians here, the world. You know, a little, little bit of that in you, you know. That's why I'm saying. You take the W-O-R-D, word, then you squeeze that little L in there, and you got the world. A little L now you got the world. And we're not supposed to be of this world, okay? Remember Christ wasn't of this world? All right. Galatians 3.12. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. All right, here we go. In 1 Peter now. Chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by the traditions from your fathers. You guys, even when I hear the word traditions, you know, like how we have our holidays, the traditions, those are the things that are of the world, okay? So I say the word of God, you guys, it's all spiritually inspired. It's written by men that were chosen by God, spiritually discerning these things. Okay, it's not of this world. Anything else? When I hear people say, hey, you ought to write a book, I'd read it, blah, blah, blah. You know? No. There's only the word of God. That's it. And I feel all these people that wrote a book, they, they let the world in. Because I know that's not Holy Spirit inspired. I don't care who they are. You know? I know the word of God is. And anybody that writes a book, I... I got nothing more I want to see or hear from them. Revelations chapter 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. Hear that? The 
book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. You guys, this spiritual, he reveals more and more to us as the times come and we get more understanding. What book ought you be reading? You know, these date setters and all that stuff, man, they're not going over scriptures. They're, there's just a lot of nonsense going on out there, man. And there's no understanding in it either. So I know it's not of God either. Revelations 14, 3 and 4. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts of the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 40 and 4,000, the 140 and 4,000, which were redeemed from the earth. What I like about this is Revelations 1, 4, 14, dash 4, it's 144. These are they which were not defiled with women. They are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Isaiah chapter 31, verse 1 and 2. Woe unto them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses, and trust in chariots, because they are many. See, this is the world again, you guys. That's what this really is. If it's not God, it's the world even though they're saying Egypt. You notice we got pyramids on our money. You know, we got spider webs on it and everything else. And stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the, the help of them that work in equity. <clears throat> this is what you're seeing right now, you guys. It's all coming down. It's all coming down. I'm going out to have breakfast this morning. That's why I'm doing this video now, and I can load it up while I'm going out having breakfast. But if you notice, he said, uh, yet he also is wise and he will bring evil and he will not call it back, his words. All right. Now the Egyptians are men and they're not gods and their horses are flesh and not spirit. You know, see, that's what I'm telling you guys. You can't contend against this. If you're carnal minded, you're done. Everything that's happening is spiritual, man. It's all spiritual, man. You're not going to, you won't be able to stand up. You're going to get swept away, man, like, like you weren't even there. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is uh, hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fall together, shall fail together. The joy of our heart is increased. Our dance is turned into mourning. That's Lamentations 5.15. Here's 16 and 17. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. This is why it says, be careful that no man steals your crown. Okay? This is, and it's the world. Don't let anybody sway you to it. Not in, you know, that's what I told people, man. I don't care if they were uh, Palestinians, Hebrews, it didn't matter. I told them, man, this is, you know, God's, he's choosing, he's not, he, what he's looking for is those who are called and chosen that are in the spirit. That's what he's looking for. You know, you're done otherwise. For this is our heart is faint. For these things, our eyes are dim. Matthew 23, 13. 
But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. They're worldly. Remember this, okay? They're carnal. They're not like Moses, even though they said they sat in his seat. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering in. Why don't they go in? Because they're carnal. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense you make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive a greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you encompass, see, and make one Pharisee, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, you blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. You fools, and you blind, and blind. For whether it's greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty, you fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by the things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, swears by the throne of God. And by him that sitteth thereon, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay the tithe of mint and in knees and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done, and not to leave the others undone, you blind guides, which strain at a gnat, and you swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites, do you make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unwhited uh, white sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanliness. Even so, you are outwardly, you appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. See, that's what it looks like now. You know, the, Satan comes as light and his, and his ministers come as ministers of righteousness. They look all this, but they're not. They're of the world. Even, um, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, excuse me, you guys, you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and you garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Here we go, Psalms. Excuse me, you guys. Psalms 106, verse 10. <clears throat> and he saved them from the hand of him that hated them, and he redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Okay, you guys, we were blind. We've been redeemed, you guys. That's why we see everything right now. That's why he says, come out from among them. Don't be a part of it, man. They are of the world, man. If they were not of the world, they would be among us. They'd be like-minded they'd know to get out from among it that's why what you see happening in israel all the e -e 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 -e, people getting all mad rioting and stuff that's going on out there right now um it's all carnal you know it's all carnal everywhere everything you're going to be see happening in the world it's going to be all uh carnal they're not going to make it man you know people are going to be getting their guns carnal there's only one way out of here, man, and it's through Jesus Christ.
do not take sides in any of this. All right, First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Hosea 7, 3, 4, and 5. They make the king glad with their wickedness and the princess with their lies. They are all adulterers, as an oven is heated by the baker who seizes from raising after he has kneaded the dough until it be leavened. In the day of our king, the princesses have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with scorners. They have made ready their heart like an oven while they lie in wait. Their bakers sleepeth all the night. In the morning it burneth as a flaming fire. Ugh. My screen disappeared. They are all hot as an oven, and they have devoured their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calleth unto me. Okay, they're not turning to the Lord anymore. You know, none of them, nowhere, ever. That's what I say, you guys, just watch. Okay. Isaiah fifty nine thirteen, In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. All right, this is about judgment and redemption. Okay, you guys remember, this is why we go over this, because he doesn't change. The things that he's done before, he's going to do again. He doesn't change. You know, it's just bigger. He got bigger when we got included, okay? When he turned to the world, all who believe in him. All right. Isaiah chapter 59, 14, 15. And judgment is turned away backwards, and justice standeth afar off. For truth has fallen in the street, and iniquity cannot enter. Yeah, truth has fallen, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. This is why you're seeing what you're seeing right now, you guys. I tell you, man, I was sick of it, man. I literally hollered out to the Lord, man. I said, let him have it. Give it to him. Let him have it all. I didn't want nothing, nothing in this place. I said, let them have it all. As sick as it was, give it to him. Pour it on. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 17 and 18. But we will certainly do whatever thing goes forth out of our own mouth to burn incense into the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princesses, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals, and we were well, and saw no evil. See, that's what they don't consider is God's mercy. You know, because if he just came in and slammed down on you and crushed you, it would be over, but he let it continue, you know, and it takes time for things to, you know, see, that's why we're here in time. Time's going to cease here pretty soon. When time stops, there's not going to be any more, you know, you ain't going to have any more time. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things. See? They don't have any understandings. You know, since they left off burning incense, 
In other words, they started, they fell away to the false, to the world, carnal things. They fell away to it. And then all of a sudden they fell away from that. You know, they don't even realize where they were in the beginning. They don't. So they think, well, we'll go back to what we were doing. All right. We have wanted all things since they fell away from doing what was wrong and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. This is what we're seeing here, you guys, okay? They have no understanding of anything. That's because they got a different spirit in them. They no longer know that Satan has always been here and waiting for them to turn to the world that's where he's waiting, like a devouring lion, man, waiting. And they forget the truth. The word that does not change, it remains the same. Malachi chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 and 15. Your words have been stout against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? You have said, it is vain to serve God, and what profit? is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. And now we call the proud happy. Yeah. This, now these are the people that turn to the world. Okay. This is why things get worse. And they weren't following the Lord because see the Lord will correct things when you're, but see they, you had a group of people that fell away. Then people were looking, looking at them prospering and stuff going, well, it's vain. You know, we might as well do what the world is doing. That's why you see what you see. They that tempt God are even delivered. This is what they're saying. Even they that feared the Lord, they spoke often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and he heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. You know, even they didn't go with the flow of things and they were just like this. They could see something was wrong. That's when I said enough. I've had it. I don't want nothing here. And the Lord hearkened and he heard it. And a book of remembrance was written for, before him <laughs> for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So you guys, this is what we're seeing, okay? First John chapter 1. Verse 5, 6, and 7. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and we declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You guys, we could see those that are carnal even of the world. We could see it even with your so-called religious system. You know, we could see it, who they are. And they do just what the Word of God says, everything. If we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Remember, Satan's a prince of darkness here, okay? But if we walk in the light as he is light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, it cleanses us from our sins. See, you're not going to be submitting yourself to sin. If you're walking in the light, man, you're going to go, you ain't going to want to near that. That's filthy, man. I ain't going down there, man. You know, it's filthy. It's unclean. That's why they were saying, well, look at what profit is it. These people are doing it. They're living good. They're going their whole lives. They're children's children. Generation after generation. Well, see, the word no longer abides in them. They don't understand what's happening with them. What's really happening? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. See, too many people have turned and went with the flow. 
and so many that uh, it's got to be destroyed now, you know, rather than, you know, overcoming evil with good. You know, we could have stopped this. It could have been stopped because God is ultimately, he's in control. But the more you, you know, turn to it and you don't cry out to the Lord, look at the history of the Jews in the book of Judges. They always cried out to the Lord. If you stand up bold as you ought to be, you cry out to the Lord. You know, he can turn things around. He can, and he does, and he did, and he has. All right? All right, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You guys, that's not what we did. We didn't turn to the Lord. Instead, we thought, okay, well, go to school, get a good education, we'll get you in college, and we can make you twice the child of the devil, you know, a part of this, sacrificing your children into this. You know, that's why they said, ah, oh, get the Bible out of school, they don't need it, you know. Well, let's bring in the evolution, you know. Oh, the earth was made a long time, the Bible's wrong. We're way off course. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his words are not in us. You guys, we're, it's just so far, man. We're, by the grace of God, had he not quickened us, pulled us out, we were all, the whole world was. He snatched us out, man. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. What, don't you know that your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, you're not of your own. For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. All right, First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 22, 23. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, he is the Lord's freeman. Likewise, also, he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. <clears throat> For you were bought with a price. Be not the servants of men. Okay? You know, don't let the world, you know, you don't have to be the servant of men. Serve the Lord. That's most important. We're passing through here, and he'll get you through it. He will. But if you're trying to do both, you're gonna. It's not gonna be good. All right, brethren, let every man, wherein he is called, therein abide with God. Okay. First Peter chapter one verse seven, eight, and nine, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perishes. Though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's what I'm saying, you know, tried with fire. It's not going to be like, you know, pleasant, you know. It's going to be like, whoa, you know. But see, we know what's going on is spiritual, okay. And we know what they're doing is carnal. But if you're of the spirit, man, and you're dead to this carnal world, this is not going to be a place we want to be. That's why I say that moment's going to come where we're going to be changed and we're going to be taken out of here. But if you're doing what the world is doing, partying, having a good time, loving it, man, though it be or arguing, fighting, getting your guns, it's all carnal, man. You, you don't want to be any part of it. Though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 1, verse 8, 9, and 10. Whom having not seen, you love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Because you see, guys, we know what's happening. We know God's doing all this. This was all predestined, every bit of it. And we know these are the tares that are being bundled. That's why we're not, you know, freaking out. We're not all scared. Because we know it's coming on them. 
you know, we're just, you know, kind of like stuck in this right now. But we're, we're going to be out pretty soon. It's them that are being bundled. All right, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. All right, searching what? Searching what? Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto your, themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look unto. This is what we're going to see. We're being tried through the fire, you guys. Believing, even though you don't see them, you know, we know, we know. You guys, I've seen things. And I'm very, very blessed to have seen what I've seen. You know, and it, and it did and does strengthen you and you'll never be the same. You know, but you guys can clearly see. You know, he is pouring his spirit out. A lot of people are having dreams. A lot of you are having attacks because this is very real. Um, and he's pouring his spirit out, man. We're getting more understanding and we know we're to be separated from this world. The scriptures are being fulfilled. You guys, we've seen it all. You know, the world can't see it, but we do. And we know it's all spiritual, what we're seeing. Also how this is all hidden to those that are lost, according to the scriptures. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you um, at the re revelations of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance, but as he that has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your here soldiering, in fear. Psalms 62, 10. You guys, we're not like fearful of uh, what we see happening. But you know, we fear God. We're grateful he pulled us out from what's happening in the world. You, you know, look at how blind they are. They, you can't even say nothing to snap them out of it. Man, that'd be a fearful thing to be do what the world is doing right now, to be stuck in that mode that they're going through. That would be a fearful thing. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. You know, do not. That's of the world, you guys. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. That power belongs to God. You guys, can you imagine how many people there, because of wealth and money, how it's turned them away? And they didn't even know it. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. You guys, gold, silver, all these things, they're here to try you. <clears throat> it's all here to try you. Excuse me. All right, Romans chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. And likewise also, the men leaving the natural uh, use of the women. You guys, this is another thing. You can see what the Spirit of God has done. Look at it. They've legalized it, passed laws. You know, God's doing it. He's, he said everything's coming abroad. 
You know, he's giving it to them, giving them everything they want, their heart's desires. That's why I told you, I said, I let them have it. I don't want nothing to do with this. That's how we're supposed to be. That's what scriptures tells you. Come out from among it, man. Let them have it. You know, that's why I always used to say, how sick does it have to get before you get sick of it? And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, doing that which is unseemly, <laughs> and receiving in themselves that recompense of their heir, which was met. And even they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobated mind to do these things which are not convenient. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ. This is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. The Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desired to look into. Do you guys realize, um, that's why they said, if you hear anybody coming to you with any other gospel, than what we have preached, get, you should know it, you know? Let me tell you something, man. They didn't come here preaching to you setting dates. They didn't do that. They didn't come preaching to you saying this, this, and this. Its number is 222, 222. They didn't do that, you know? You should easily be able to tell who these people are, you know? Remember, they come as ministers of righteousness, you know, if they're writing books, I stay away from them. I don't have nothing to do with them because it's carnal, you know. And we need to understand what they're going to write a book and you're going to get understanding from their book that you can't get from the Word of God. If it's hidden, it's hidden to them that are lost. These people aren't going to write a book and give you understanding. If you want to get any understanding, it's in the Word of God. It's not going to be in their books. 1 Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelations of Jesus Christ. Here in Romans 1, 31, without understanding, covenant breakers, with, uh, without natural affection, implaceful, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, they that do such things are worthy of death. Not only do they do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. 1 Corinthians chapter one or chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal. You see what I'm saying? How carnal the world you know, when Christ came into the world, the world didn't know him because, you know, the devil, man, he's he's got you right off the bat here. There among you is envying and strife, divisions. Are you not carnal and walk in men? For while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, who's Apollos, but ministers 
whom you have believed, even as the Lord gave unto every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth is anything, neither he that watereth, but God that gives the increase. You know, just like he snatched us out, just like he's revealed things to us now. And we have more understanding now from the word. Now that he planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundations and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds upon it. You know, this is what I'm saying, you guys. It's not a, nothing to play with. And, and you, you see what people are doing, man. You should easily be able to see past them. Now, if any man builds upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day will declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Okay, now if if what you're doing is given the word of God, I don't think that's going to burn up. You know, if you're given the gospel that the Holy Spirit inspired and wrote, that's not going to burn up. But if you're coming out with two two twos and star settings, and you know, it might even be worse than that because they could be devils in them doing what they're doing. I don't know. It's not good. If a man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know you not that you are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world, it's foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Remember, he's the maker, the creator of all this. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. You know? That's why I've had people try and put me up on a pedestal, you know. Oh, you this, you that. <clears throat> Man, I, I all I'm doing is reading the Word of God, and I'm coming against the people that are trying to do other other than that. Okay, and I'm pointing out things like He doesn't change; He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So shouldn't we know what He's done before and what He's going to do now? And Jesus Christ didn't come so we can, not what they're preaching today. No. You know, he came and made a way to put an end to the sacrifice of bulls and calves and all that. He did it one time. Now he's a mediator. He's a high priest. You know, there is no more ignorance. It should all be done away with too. Unless you're carnal, the world. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in man, for all things are yours. 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So you're not going to be going through these trials and tribulations here and be sinning. You're not going to be taking pleasure in it. You won't be. Okay? People that are still of the world, carnal, they're going to, you know, they're telling you with their own mouth. They're sinning every day. You know, they're not suffering in their flesh. They're taking pleasure in it. All right? First Peter chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. That you no longer should live the rest of your lives. Uh, rest of this of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life 
many suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, reviling, banquets, abominable uh, idolatries. You ever notice a lot of these people out there, banquets and stuff? And they all got their own foundations and, and they're not good. It's only one foundation we got to be building on, not on these other people's foundations. You know, people throw millions of dollars into their foundations, man. All right. First Peter 4, 4 and 5 and 6. When they think it's strange that you don't run with them anymore to the same uh, excess of riot, and now they speak evil of us, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. And for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity will cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one towards another without grudging. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold of grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it with the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, says the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor did they hearken. Unto me, says the Lord, your fathers, where are they? The prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I command my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so has he dealt with us. Why do the disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. This is Matthew 5, 2. But he answered and he said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your traditions? Are you guys seeing the traditions that we have here going on? They're not God's ways. They're there for a reason, to keep you in darkness. Has not my hands made all these things? Acts 7.50 and 1 and 2. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did. So do you. Which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before you the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. See, they didn't keep the law either, okay? So be careful that when you see people telling you that they try to keep the law in. Listen, it's in our hearts. We walk by faith in the Spirit in Christ. We don't, remember, the law 
it's spiritual, okay? But the carnal, when you know, that's why Christ came. We are in Christ. And that's why we have to be walking this time in the spirit, seeking after the spirit, not the carnal. If you want to know what the carnal's doing, just look around. It's going to be increasing a lot more. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, 5, and 6, and 7. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our fathers, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you under the grace of our Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. In other words, ear tickling stuff, you know. They and they selected teaching. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You see that? They pervert the gospel of Christ. Ear tickling and stuff. That's why most people don't read it. They've had their ears tickled. They they don't they think they know it. This is the gospel, A B C. Gospel made simple. Anybody tells you that, man, they're a liar. But though we, or an archangel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let them be accursed. As we said before, so say I again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if it for if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. You guys, this ear tickling stuff, they're seeking to please men. Okay? Remember Jesus' teachings, he came to give you the will of God, what he came to give you the words God wanted us to have. And everything that they're tickling your ears with is not Jesus' teachings. That's selective teaching, okay? All right, we see today they seek to please men. Prosperity, gospel, and wealth, even sin is, is accepted today. You know, they accept this. And we see those given reprobate minds, as Scripture says it would be. We have been redeemed, and our eyes have been opened in our understanding, so we can make ourselves ready in the blood of Christ. Okay, God bless you guys. I love each and every one of you. <coughs> I hope and pray everybody there received a message from it. I know we go over a lot of these same Scriptures, and we go over different things to you. We already know who we are. Nobody needs our ears tickled. You know, but we need to know the truth. So when you stumble across some of these people, what they're doing, you'll know who they are. You know, you know, if they're the servants of Christ, God, they're going to be reading this scripture and they're going to, they're not going to be coming out here giving you no ABC scripture doctrine, telling you uh, this, this, and that's all you got to do. They're not going to do that. They're not. And uh, the, they perverted the gospel. Okay, that's what Jude talks about. You know, these, these people are deceivers. They came into the churches a long time ago. And now people, you know, the school systems, everything, everybody's been raised this place is totally upside down. God bless you guys. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.